Okay, guys, lore number three of my top five of 2013, and I am, <laughs> I'm already regretting this, but I, I, I gotta tell you, just, just do it. Order a Black Dog Bates Shellcracker G2. You will not be disappointed. You will catch an excellent fish on this. You will have a great day on this. And it bridges the gap between being such a cool lore and being such a damn effective lore. What's up everybody? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. Guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Black Dog Baits Shellcracker G2. And I got to tell you up front, this has become one of my uh, my absolute favorite swim baits. Uh, as you can see, it's a small swim bait. It's four inches. It's about an ounce and a half. And um, I've been fishing this for about six to seven years. Uh, what I'd like to do today, guys, is, is tell you everything that you need to know about this bait. And yes, it is pretty simple. For those of you in a rush, let me just give you the quick synopsis here. It is a short, four inch, but very, very chunky bluegill bait, as you can see. And uh, it's kind of niche is that it does three things really well. It is a great dedicated wake bait. And one of the cool things about it is you can go slower with this and still get full articulation out of all the joints than just about, well, in my opinion, anything else I've seen or own. Uh, you know that slow equals, equals more time in the strike zone, and that's the way that myself and a lot of people really kill it. The thing you'll hear over and over is use this as slow as possible, and that's one of the things that it does really well. The other thing that it is, is a crankbait. You see that bill? You see how steep it is? It goes down reliably. You can get it down about three or four feet if you push it, but it wants to go down about one to maybe two and a half on a casual retrieve, and it does that well, and you will absolutely get strikes uh, cranking this over you know, shallow grass, stuff like that. And then the last thing is, you see that bill? You see how wide it is? It also is a really good square bill. So not only are you just cranking it as a crankbait, but aim for things. Like I'm in an area here, you might even be able to see there's a lot of timber. I always cast it into timber. I, I actually pitch it into things. I'm always trying to hit things with it because it just deflects so well and very, very rarely does it get hung up. So that's the synopsis, guys. And you might just be able to walk away knowing that. But if you want to watch the rest of the video, if you see the time down below, this is a long video. I like to go into a lot of detail, uh, and I have a lot of uh, little nuances I want to share with you guys, my experiences having used it over the past uh, about six or seven years, and also a lot of fish catching action. So guys, it's a, it's a little gem of a lure. I highly, highly recommend it. It's proven itself to me over the years for not only doing numbers, but I'm not really a numbers guy. If you're someone who's looking to get bigger fish, you might default to thinking it's got to be bigger baits. I have a lot of big baits myself, but not just for me, but for a lot of people out there, this little four inch chunky bait catches a disproportionate amount of really big fish. My benchmark for a big fish, I'm a New Jersey angler, I'm in the Northeast, but my benchmark is five pounds. That separates the men from the boys. Five pounds and up is why I throw swim baits. And this has caught me a lot of five plus pound fish. So guys, that's the synopsis, that's the intro. If you wanna hang around, Look down below in the video description. There's going to be a lot of talking points. We're going to talk about the various elements of performance. We're going to talk about durability. Um, what else do we got, guys? I actually have notes. The design and features. A lot to go into here. So look down below in the video description. See what it is that you want to know about. If you only want to know about a few things, and go right to that spot. But otherwise, if you want to hang out and geek out with me and talk lures, uh, we're going to talk. Black Dog Bait, Shellcracker G2. Thanks for watching. 
Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, this is actually a very last minute edition, even though you've seen it in the beginning of the video. Um, I was just about to upload this video and I actually contacted the owner of Black Dog Bage just to put on his radar and say that, you know, the G2 has been one of my favorite lures over the years. And uh, I'm doing this big comprehensive review video. Just wanted to let you know to look out for it. I'm going to upload it pretty soon. And uh, he actually threw something out to me, which of course I'm going to extend to you. He said that uh, if anybody references my channel, if they're going to pick up some baits, uh, he can offer them free shipping. So I'm going to put that, uh, I've never done one of these things before, like any kind of affiliate thing. <clears throat> this is new to me. So it's just my channel name. It's uh, Keeping It Real. If you uh, put that in, in the uh, field on the site, I guess a coupon code or something like that, it'll uh, be free shipping on uh, the G2s or I believe anything else from the site. Um, I calculated it from both West, uh, West Coast and East Coast, and it seems to be a flat $7 regardless of where you're shipping to. So if you're going to get one anyway, guys, uh, you could save 7 bucks on shipping by putting in that code. There you go. All right, let's start by taking a close look at the G2 and its basic design and some of the features of that design. So here we go everybody. Let's get our uh, our specs out of the way first, our non-negotiables. The lure is uh, right about four inches in length. In terms of width, it does carry a chunky profile. You're looking at just under an inch. Maybe it does hit, yeah, I think at its widest point there's probably a little bit of distortion from the camera, but at its widest point, you're looking at it about an inch, and it carries that bulk uh, greatly through the lure. It doesn't taper down too much, as you can see, towards the tail. It is a bulky, uh, short, but bulky little lure. Weight-wise, we should be looking at about 1.5 ounces. Let's corroborate that. And this particular one that I have here, 1.35. Although there shouldn't be much deviation, this isn't a resin bait or something that's poured. Uh, this is an injection molded bait. It's uh, more of a mass produced bait. So that 1.35 or started as 1.4 should be the weight uh, pretty much across the board on all of them. Let's get this out of here. All right, guys, moving to the front of the lure here, I'd like to call your attention to the lip and the angle of the lip. Now in many ways, the Shellcracker G2 is kind of like a glorified square bill. And I mean that in the, kind of the nicest possible way. It is a square bill. And you can see not only is it square, but it also uh, comes out to the side here to really maximize the rolling ability and its ability to deflect. Uh, what I like about this lip to me, it's a kind of an ideal lip angle such that the G2 is very at home as a dedicated wake bait. It is very easy. Just keep your rod tip kind of high and or just keep a slow retrieve and it stays on top all day long. It's very, very buoyant. Again, it's injection molded, so it's hollow. There's air on the inside. You can see, you know, when we look at the, uh, the phantom finish one, right? It's just plastic. And so it's very, very easy to keep it on top and you could use it, you know, many people will use it just as a wick. But it has the duality of that angle because of how steep it is rather than it being more vertical. Because it is steep at any time, you can drop your rod tip, increase your speed a little bit, uh, and or play with diameters and types of lines, and you'll have to experiment to uh, see for yourself. But it's equally adept at going down and becoming a true shallow crankbait. Um, let's see, next guys. Another interesting thing of note is in the design, guys, as you can see, you may want to call it a three-piece, but it's really just a two-piece. The tail, I wouldn't consider that to be a joint, so to speak. It is a joint, but the body is here. The body is in the front and the secondary section. Um, this right here is just the tail and the tail alone. You can see it's very interesting in its design. It has a lot of free play. It gets its range of motion, not by sliding back and forth like this, but kind of just pivoting in that enormous gap that it has there. But fished in the water, it fishes like a two-piece in the body with a little bit of that tail kick. This is different than something like, I'll just roll in another lure here, another great uh, topwater deflect deflecting lure like Mike Buca's Bullshed 4x4, which is a true one, two, three piece design. The tail is non-articulating, it's fixed. 
And the three-piece design, of course, is always going to have a more serpentine, kind of a more snake-like action versus any of our two-piece baits kind of have that more nervous, just kind of like side-to-side, -side, like one-two, one-two action. So um, that is attributable to the two-piece design, but you still have more fluidity than many two-pieces because the tail has that freedom of motion. Now, speaking of the tails, everybody, let me show you something super cool. You're going to love this. So here's my uh, Phantom one, and you can see this one's a little beat up. It's my original one. It's about six years old. See that tail there? It's really starting to show some abuse, and that's fine, right? Those are battle scars. That's proven out that the lore works. But wouldn't it be cool if we can go from this to this? That was quick, right? <laughs> customizable tails guys this is such a cool thing and it doesn't take that much longer than uh, that little edit did right there just just a couple seconds to, to switch them out very very simple let me show you what I'm talking about here and then I'll walk you through one so you can go onto the manufacturers website and they sell spare tails now I don't see colors listed on the site so I don't know which color you would get you I'm sure you can ask the manufacturer but even if it's a color that you don't want, or maybe he just sells them clear, I'm not sure, because I was just sent a bunch of these things, um, you can always make these into whatever you want. And say, say he's uh, selling a pink one, you don't want a pink, that's fine, guys, it's just regular plastic. Put it in some thinner, some paint thinner, get it to clear, and then just get some translucent spray paint, color of your choice, make these what you want them to be. You could just dip the ends in something like spike it, or you could just you do a little bit of spray painting, or even just a brush, it really doesn't matter. But this is the cool part, is that the manufacturer does sell these replacement tails. Um, now speaking of replacing, guys, uh, this, where is it? This is the uh, tail I just took off, the original tail. Got about six years of use on it. Um, obviously it's not broken, and uh, on all my other ones that I've had, I've never broke a tail. And all my thousands and thousands and thousands of casts, um, I've never broke a tail. So they're, they're robust. It's a pretty thick gauge of, let's focus. It's a pretty thick plastic. The holes aren't drilled too close to the edge. And I mention those things because I have baits from other manufacturers and I just didn't think it through. Some of the holes that they cut were way, way too close, which made them frail, or they just used too thin of a piece, which made it liable to break. The design here is just, is just well thought out. So let me show you how easy it is to replace these things and how slick the mechanism is. I really think that this is probably the, by far the smartest uh, design attachment mechanism of any hard bait that I own. Uh, let me show you. The bright bluegill model is going to be our, our guinea pig for this uh, demonstration, guys. And if we get in close here, I hope to be able to show you, there's two pins but it's really just one piece of metal. This end is kind of a U-shape, and over here we have two spots where it comes up and connects, and you'll see a lot more clearly as I take it out how the mechanism works. Very, very, very smart design. What you're gonna need is a pair of thin needle nose. I find that these bent ones help a little bit, but they're totally not necessary. You could just use standard ones. Now what you wanna do is you wanna get in there and just relieve a little bit of pressure because these right now are pushing outwardly um, to keep themselves in place. So we're just going to squeeze them slightly and as we squeeze we're going to kind of pull it as we squeeze and there you go. And now you can kind of see the mechanism. You see how they're bent and so when they go through this piece of plastic they go through that little hole and then they kind of move out that way because of the, the pressure on them, the tension, and they just get seated onto a little shelf there. And that's it guys. And then you just do the same thing again Hold your tail. Squeeze these things. I stress a little bit. It's a very, very thin piece of metal. This is not something where you want to squeeze it too hard. And there you go. Your tail is free. It's cool because this piece will stay captive, right? You have to squeeze it each time you want to get it off. So if by chance you were doing this out on the water, this is not going to, you're not going to lose this piece. And there you can very clearly see how it works. So we go through there, you squeeze it, and then it kind of seats into place. And let's say we want a little pop, right? We want to differentiate ourselves and say we just want to draw some attention to that tail. Maybe we have some very murky water. Let's go with this hot pink. 
installation is very simple as you might imagine what you want to do is just kind of hold it in place here this first part can be a little tricky what I like doing is just getting one end of that clip in on one side there we go just got one side in and now you're just gonna put the other side through this is the only part here that just takes a little sec second to do now you should just be able to push it Oh, I'm squeeze it just a hair more. There we go. Now we're through the tail. And then the last part here, guys, we're just going to squeeze them together. Again, slightly. Squeeze. And we're going to seat them into place now. I'm going to go over here, push this, and you'll hear it click. Click. And there we go. The pins are, let me get my focus going for you there. The pins are seated right there. And now our bright bluegill has an ever so cool pink tail. We just differentiated ourselves or really changed, uh, you know, at least the color presentation. And really one of the spots that matters the most because the tail is the part that's really, you know, even on those slow crawls, it's moving around. And it's the, it's the visual part. Right on any bait, this is always the part that we're dying. We're trying to call attention to is that last little back part because it always has the most action, even when we're going slow. So that's it, guys. I just thought the this tail mechanism here is just it's so so cool. I love it from a kind of a, de a design and engineering point of view. It is perfect. It is reliable. It is stout and sturdy. It's easy to uh, to change out yourself, and it affords you customization options, which the manufacturer knows and they supply tails readily on the website. Uh, so yeah guys, tail system is awesome. Let's look at this Halloween colored one here, very, very cool, limited edition, and use it to illustrate something I wanna show you guys regarding the design and the hooks. These hooks are what I call an interference design. I think most people call it an interference design, meaning that they do have the ability to get, if I could show you here, <laughs> ensnared in each other like that. Now. My preference is always lures that no matter what you do, no matter how you move the lure in its full range of motion, the hooks can never get tangled. Because, you know, in a, um, undeniably, there's going to be some times where you get that perfect cast, you just sneaked it into that perfect little location and you, you're certain that there's a fish there, and that'll be the cast that your hooks get hung up. So guys, I just wanted to tell you that it can happen, but from my experience fishing it all these years, it happens so, so infrequently. While they can touch each other, at least with the stock hooks, of course you could put on smaller hooks if you wanted to, but also keep this in mind for those of you that may want to upsize, the stock hooks, and they are the same, or pretty much all the same on all the models here. The manufacturer really hasn't deviated too much with regard to size or shank length. This happens very, very rarely that they get hung up. I can easily go a trip or even a few trips without having any of my casts have the hooks getting tangled. So while it is possible in practice, it's very, very rare that that ever happens. And the last thing everybody I'd like to show you here at the tabletop talking about designs and features and benefits uh, are the man is the manufacturer offering you the various finishes. This one here, as you can see, is the ghost or the phantom finish. Uh, this one here actually happens to be my favorite. I feel comfortable throwing this everywhere, uh, but particularly, of course, in clear water. It, to me, it's the uh, definitely the most natural of the bunch. Uh, and he has offered phantom finishes in some of the other colors as well. It may seem like I have a lot, but this has uh, been produced in a multitude of colors over the years. But uh, that is one of the cool things about it, is that they do offer it in opaque. I think this one's kind of semi-see-through. Yeah, a little bit opaque finishes that are very striking and very pungent like the white and the bright bluegill as well as the more natural and subdued phantom finish so that's awesome no matter what kind of water clarity you're dealing with you'll be able to find a not only a color pattern but also a um, kind of an impact of it the see-through versus the opaque that suits your taste Hey everybody, in this video you're going to see these other two colors here and I got them after I shot most of the video so I'm just editing this in now because I know how important color can be and I'd like to always give you a close-up look so you really know what you're getting into. Uh, an additional color that the manufacturer just started making recently, this is called Yellow Head. 
black bait. What, I, what I'm gonna try to show you guys in some, some night shots is that this is black, but in light there is a ton, a ton of kind of this prism, kind of sapphire, ultra fine ref, uh, reflective flake in it. This is so cool. It doesn't show up here at the tabletop. I hope I have a good representative image rolling in right about now. I'm gonna try to get that. Um, but yeah, black lore with the pungency of the yellow tip and the yellow head, but a ton of little micro reflective uh, flakes in there. So that's yellow head. And the other one which the manufacturer just started cooperating with uh, realistic wraps is this one right here. And again, this one, what really surprised me about this, so first of all, the wrap is exceptionally well done. It's tight, there's no edges, there's nothing that you could pick off. And uh, these things are just on there. Realistic wraps, you really don't have to worry at all about these things coming off. They are on for life, unless you send it to get uh, to, to be redone. But I just want to give you guys a close-up of that realistic wrapped gill. It's very, very cool. But this one also, what shocked me is the first time I took it out at night, this thing has basically the effect of like a safety vest at night, or you know, on some of our shoes where there's that reflective strip and it just throws light. It's so reflective. That is in this wrap. It is, it, again, can't see it here at the tabletop. I'm gonna try to roll in some clips. You can do a pretty long cast, and if you have a headlamp on, your bait will shine back at you. And you have to imagine on like a, a very uh, bright moonlit night, this thing is actually very reflective in the water. So not only is it on top, easy to be pinned, but it also becomes a very visual lure, not in the sense of very uh, striking, like a lot of black colors, but it actually throws a light. Very, very cool. Something you wouldn't uh, immediately notice just looking online, but um, I hope I have some clips and I could show you just how striking that is. The realistic wrapped bluegill. everybody so out here on the water we're talking performance and let's start by talking about this lure as a wake bait now here's the secret you ready this is where you really want to be paying attention and it's super simple and I'm probably beating it like a dead horse in this video but this is what I really want you to take away if you get one of these things what this lure does that's unique in the market and what makes it I believe what makes it so potent is how crazy slow you can go on your retrieve and still get full articulation out of all the joints so the thing looks like it's still swimming nice and fluidly at crazy slow speeds. I could roll in the clip that I, I uh, set up the other day here. I have this next to a 9-inch MS Slammer and also Mike Buca's uh, Bullshed 4x4. And you could see the uh, what some people call like the rate of stall. It's the point where as you're not going fast enough and the lure washes out and the action just disappears. You'll notice that Mike's Buca, uh, the 4x4 does a pretty good job. It's, it's, it, you can go pretty slow with that thing and it still swims, but it starts to look a little bit more mechanical. And it just has to do with the fact that it's a larger, heavier lure. Uh, but the little G2 here, as you'll see, very, very slow speeds. It still swims beautifully. Why is that so important? Guys, the deal is time in the strike zone. Now that's not always going to be the formula. Sometimes it's all about burning it or sometimes it's popping it, but this lure has a nasty reputation. But You know what I mean by nasty, nasty in the best way possible. And if you look on forums, if you go to Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and you see people who've been using this for a while, and you look at the comments, you're going to see one thing come up again and again and again. And when people say how they were using it, it's as slow as possible. Particularly, here's another little secret, for some people, this is like the night lore. I know a lot of the bigger lures like claim that, like uh, the MS Slammer, like the greatest night lore, something like that. Guys, fish this lure at night and go as crazy slow as you can while still getting it to swim. Put in some pauses, real pauses, one, two, three seconds, and then start that crazy slow swim. 
I hate the word guarantee. I, I hate it. It's used so much in fishing. I mean, what can you really guarantee? But I could just about guarantee that you will light it up some nights on that system there of crazy slow and pauses when nothing else is working for you on this little chunky bluegill. It's just the deal. That's what's been doing it for me for the past six years, seven years, or whatever it's been. So guys, super, super slow retrieve. Now what makes that possible? And that's just simple guys, it's just the size of the lure. As lures get bigger, you can't expect them to be as nimble in the water, right? If you had hypothetically like a two foot lure that weighed like a couple pounds, of course it's gonna have to move faster. You have to move more water over it to get all that mass to move around. So the fact that this is a compact lure, it's injection molded, right? So it's hollow, it's a very light plastic versus like a resin. It's just the nature of the design. You don't have to make it go very fast to get that swimming action. So it's no, no magic in it, but it is the deal. And as far as I know, I don't know anything else on the market. And I have quite a few wakes, guys. I got quite the collection. Um, I don't have anything else that can go as slow as this and still get the swimming action. And that in and of itself, it's like, all right, who cares? It can go slow, but it translates to bites, like really consistent bites. And this is just my personal opinion, and while it's played out over the years in my data, is that I believe the biggest fish don't want to exert a lot of energy, and some of my biggest bites are on that super, super slow retreat. They just come up, they get, you know, they're the alphas in the area, and they crush this thing going crazy, crazy slow. So that's waking, guys. Try it out and see what happens. There we go. Fish on. That's just me. I mean, five is a great fish, and that's my mark of a of a good fish, five and up. But uh, I'm at that point where I just really, really want like a true Northeast trophy. Fives are nice, sixes are nice, but uh, seven, seven or eight is, is really what I'm fixated on. And so even like this here, I feel like I'm conceding right now. I've been going all day, you know, no strikes, that's fine. But uh, it's hard to turn away when you do have some fish finally biting. But I just, I have a hard time thinking that a real, real giant's back here. But you never know. You never know. I wasn't, I wasn't even going to come back here. Oh, just missed one. That same fish, well, I can't say that same fish, but I got a, a strike in almost that same exact spot when I first came back here. And in neither time did that fish feel the hooks. I don't feel like I ever, uh, on that hook set, I don't think I had any resistance. So, let's give him another go. Watch it be like a huge fish, just doing these little, little kisses on the lure. That's on. And that is a better fish. <laughs> yeah, definitely a better fish. No, don't get ripped. Take me for a ride. Don't get off. Woo! Yeehaw! Oh, that's funny, guys. Same spot two times before, this fish just barely kissed it. How could something so big be so delicate? Here we go. On what? On the Shellcracker G2. Damn. That's a uh, solid four. Might crack five, we'll see.
All right, guys, let's see what this girl's clocking in at. I had a hell of a time getting those hooks out. They just were in a really bad way. Oh my God, what do we got? Five, six, nice. Nice. So, you want to crank the G2? That is a good decision. You would be very wise to, guys. While, while waking, I think, is really what makes the bait exceptional, the fact that the same lure is very competent as a shallow crankbait just just kills man it's really the two lures in one uh, and not only that there's a lot of times where you know you're, you're sitting there within two casts I might make a cast and I'm targeting a lay down I'm targeting I want to parallel you know some pads and just wake it along and have them come out and then I pivot this way and I want to go two to three feet down above my grass right the same lure is is really good at both it's not just okay it's good at both of those things the one thing I just want to share with you guys here when you're cranking this thing down um, a speedy retrieve, not super fast, not burning it, but a, a good pace retrieve gets you down about a foot or two. What's the variability between the foot or two? How far you cast it. Of course, if you cast it further, you're going to have more time to get it down, and of course the line as well. If you're using fluorocarbon and thinner gauge, uh, thinner lines, it's going to go down. Although, this is not, because it's a wake bed, I typically don't use mine on fluorocarbon. My deal, as I uh, probably mentioned in the rod and reel section, is braid going to a liter. On this one, sometimes I'll put it on 17. I never really go higher than that. But if I can, if I don't have to go heavier, I actually keep it on 15. I know for a lot of people that's scary. They like to run it on 20, but I go on 15 and it, it works well. Uh, and it allows me to get down, uh, when I do want to crank it, it allows me to get down a little bit deeper at a slower retrieve. Again, more time and strikes on there. I'm all about that. Uh, the other thing I just want to share with you guys is that if you really pick up the pace, you can get it down to about three or four feet, but I don't know about you, but there's going to be instances where the, the headroom of your weeds is a little bit deeper. Sometimes I'm looking and my weeds come up and I still got about six feet from the top of the water to the top of the weeds. And I, and I want to get the G2 as close as I can to the top of those weeds. Not so much to tick them. I don't want to, you know, to get hung up in this stuff. But I just want to make it as easy as possible for those bass to come up out. They don't have to go too far. They can just come up, snap it, and come, you know, think that they can go right back down. They got their meal. Um, guys, this is nothing to do with this lure, but just a quick tip. Drop your rod tip in the water, man. Just, you know, here's the deal. Check it out. You're going along, the lure gets down to about four feet, but I know I want to get it down to about five or six feet. I just make up that last two feet in my rod. That's it. You didn't see that. <laughs> there we go. That's it. So if getting here, if putting your rod here gets you to about four feet, what I'll do is I'll drop it down two to three feet, maintain the same uh, retrieve speed and then then you're there and you'll feel it you know you'll feel when you tick it and then you just raise the rod a little bit and you're coming right along that so even though you see it as rated as a max of four feet understand just use tools at your disposal drop the rod in the water and you can get down a little bit further and sometimes you know that's going to be where the bite's at so yeah guys it is excellent also as a crankbait they find it um, the click and the clack of the joints and again that just that small blue bluegill profile it's so ubiquitous, there's no place in the country you can't go, and that's not an attractive meal to a bass. And I'm probably beating it like a dead horse, but that's the point of this review, guys, is the width of it. The fact that it is a chunky meal makes it worth the effort for those bigger fish, but the small size is going to get you the numbers as well. So, you know what we should do right now? We should look at a clip of some fish being caught cranking the G2. There we go. Fish on. You see right there, the little wind kicking up as this, just in the center part of this cove. Where I see wind, I will crank the G2. At this point, you're just talking about a big square bill, uh, albeit a segmented one. 
not a whole lot different. Pretty much the same in, in size and almost profile as those Lucky Craft, what are those SKT Magnum, something like that. Uh, I've laid them side by side and they're pretty much the same size. Uh, interesting, even though this one is segmented, um, just the nature of those square bowls that they really kick the tail out. Uh, this, those Lucky Crafts, they really kick the tail, really, you know, my square bowls do in a very exaggerated way. This one's got pretty good freedom of motion, <clears throat> but it's not, I don't, I don't think it's quite as frantic an action, actually, as the, um, as the uh, square bills are. Got him. Got him on the crank. Little guy. Little guy. Take this thing cranking by him. Oh. Okay. So there we go, guys. Little guy. That's that's the size of the day, man. I'm almost with this place. I can't do better than like a one and a half today. Third fish of the same size. Um, but yeah, we're just cranking the uh, the G2 shallow area, that was only probably about three feet of water I was going in right there, but um, get the rod, there you go, little guy, G2, catches them on all sizes, although we're always looking for the giants. What's up? I took you back into the timber here to talk about the last element of the uh, kind of the trifecta of what makes the G2 uh, such a great little bait, and that is cover bumping. So pretty simple, guys. Uh, the shape, size, and angle of that lip uh, are just really, really efficient. I like to call this kind of like a square bill on steroids just because it's proven itself to me over the years of just coming through thick, thick stuff so consistently and so reliably. Um, it's not perfect, you know, there are going to be occasionally times where it does hang up, but it's so rare that it's given me the confidence to fish it in, in new ways. And one of the things that I do is I look for areas where there's lots of laydowns, and I purposely, I, I will like cover the bank and I'll pitch it. You would think I was, I'm pitching a jig, and I'm sitting here pitching a treble hooked lure into thick, thick stuff, and sitting there just reeling it a few times, getting that little swimming action, pausing it, swimming action, and just hitting the next spot. And just presenting those fish with something that they don't see. You know, normally people are punching, uh, putting the jig in there or some other lure. I'm putting a little bluegill in there. And kind of going back to what we were saying earlier with the fact that this thing could swim so so slow, you get more swimming in a shorter uh, area of space. So if I got like a little two-foot pocket, you know, that's surrounded by trees and I put it in there, if I had something big like an MS Slammer, I can't get that thing to swim. I don't have enough real estate. But two feet for this, I could actually have it go like swim, 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 swim in that little space. And guys, I'm just telling you, it is, uh, it is equated to a, a lot of fish. Actually, on this lake and in a very similar area is where I got my personal best. Um, and I was doing it around the timber. Uh, one thing though, guys, a little kind of uh, extra information here. I know some of you might say, you know, when you're around cover, uh, it gets a little precarious running a treble hook bait in and around these areas. Um, you can't lay into them, maybe as, as hard as uh, you want, you're afraid of bending out these hooks. And what if those fish dive down, right? What if they don't fully swallow the lure? What if they kind of have it on the outside? And now they have, you know, treble hooks that could get caught in the wood as a fish is diving and trying to escape. Let me share with you uh, another step that you could take to give yourself a little more insurance policy. If you're in a super, super thick area, tons and tons of trees, I would still say go for it. I mean, I do. <laughs> and uh, what I do is this. And I used to rock these on my, one of my G2s, but now I just put them on this new yellow head. I go to those uh, inline single hook replacements. Okay, and so what, what these allow you to do is now rather than six points, obviously, you, you know, you don't have two, tra two treble hooks. Rather than six hooks, you have two. Don't be unnerved. Don't say that you, it's, it doesn't cut down in your hookup ratio, surprisingly. 
most of the time again guys most of the time it's a very very small lure your good fish are just going to swallow it and so you're going to get them with both points right you don't you don't miss but even the ones that take it lackadaisically again because the lure is so small anywhere they grab it they're still getting a hook i have found there isn't too much of a difference maybe slightly lower hookup ratio with this setup but not much but if you want to put this lure if you want to show them a bluegill in those super thick areas with tons and tons of timber and you just want to have a little bit more peace of mind not only for really hoarsing them out because this is a stronger hook uh, but also to not get hung up because now you only have the two points there when you're working it over that timber uh, you could try this as well using these uh, owner or it just doesn't matter what brand these uh, inline single hook replacements but that's it guys you know whether you do it standard style and you have minimal cover or you replace the hooks um, I highly highly recommend throwing the G2 in around and through timber um, and it's gonna it's gonna pay dividends guys it's one of one of my another one of my little secret ways to work it and um, it's equated to a lot of fish in the boat over the years so uh, that's that's a uh, cover bumping there we go fish on long shell cracker Fish on. Oh yeah, baby. It's only the second cast. Ooh, she's strong. Not a giant, but a solid fish. You guys should check this out. I got her hooked pretty good. I think I can chance this. Oh, she's right where I want to put my thumb, though. Damn. Right where I want to put my thumb. Don't jump. Come on. Woo wee, baby. Good choice. Good choice coming to this place, man. The hole in the wall, second cast produced on that little G2. Booyah, baby, booyah. That was exciting. Oh, I just seen, oh, I see a bed. I just see a couple more clear out there. First cast, that should be a high three, maybe a four. That's what I'm talking about, man. Is this gonna be a good day? All right, guys, so there we go. Solid, solid one. G2, getting to work real quick. Hopefully this bite holds up. Nothing huge, you know. I'm looking for that seven plus, man. That's my goal this year, but this will be a solid three. Three and a half, three and three quarters. Good stuff, man, good stuff. Durability. How does the G2 stand up to normal, everyday wear and tear? Yeah, man, these are durable little buggers, guys. Uh, we're gonna take a look at these three. Throughout the course of the video, you've seen a lot of colors here, but m a lot of those other colors I've only picked up recently. It's been like the past year or two, so we're gonna focus on these. These have seen uh, the most action. Starting with the uh, the Phantom Bluegill. Um, that's the obvious one. You can see that the tail's all paints off it which uh, looked at that in the uh, tail replacement section of this video and uh, you can see also here on the body you can see how it's coming off there but it's just the paint it's just the paint and man seriously like after six years and I don't know how many fish uh, maybe not as many as you guys think I'd say all told maybe I have like 
I don't know, maybe 60, 70 fish on this. Like, I don't fish it constantly. I have other wake baits, but um, still, maybe if it's like 60 or 70 fish over six years and just time in the water and everything else and errant casts, hitting things I didn't mean to hit. I mean, that's not bad, man. These things, for just a single layer of, of uh, paint, it's not like there's uh, those outer layers of epoxy or anything that, you know, those sealants like we have on some of our resin baits. Just for a single layer, it's held up great. I think the reason for that is pretty much how you use this bait using it as a wake, a shallow crank, uh, crank or even the, the cover bumping. Uh, in two of those areas, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't get hit by anything until you get a strike. And the cover bumping, you're going to be hitting probably wood. I don't think you're going to be aiming for rocks with this. And wood generally does not affect your paint. Uh, wood's hard, but it's not hard enough to chip your paint. So they really do last a long time. Um, this one here, this has my personal best on it. That's 715. This is fun. You got some of those, uh, where are they? You got those little teeth marks right there. Got that? There they are, little teeth marks. But uh, also in this video, the um, that one fish that came real shallow, about five pounds, six ounces, that came on this. I actually retired this lure. <laughs> I actually did that because until I get a new PB, I, I, I retired that little guy. Uh, and this one here, I probably got the bright bluegill maybe, I don't know, a year or two after this one. And every fish you've seen in this video, a lot of them came on the bright bluegill, a lot. Um, and just over the years quite a few fish. This one is unscathed. It's like remarkable I don't see I don't even know how I don't have teeth marks on it I, It's weird, but it's perfect and there's a lot of fish on it. So Anyway guys, yeah durability I'd say is excellent, but more than the paint the paint is secondary We all know that you could have a lord doesn't look like much or have the paint almost gone and still get bit readily uh, in terms of durability I'm more interested in the fact that the tails none of my tails have broke none of these lures for all of my errant casts uh, hitting docks or occasionally hitting rocks none of them have cracked none have taken in water none of my bills have broken nothing has broken on any of my baits over the years so I'm not saying that it's it's like superhero strength I, I really do think it's kind of just average plastics but um, coupled to the fact that it is a lighter lure like when you do hit things it's not like you're sending two or three or four or five ounces of swim bait in there you're sending an ounce and a half um hey it just adds up to be a pretty durable lure man and shy of uh, losing some paint over the years you should be set these will last you a long long time all right everybody let's wrap it up here and uh just want to give you my personal opinion i think you can already gather how i feel about this lure but uh let's summarize the uh shell cracker g2 and uh, all of its attributes Okay, so let's wrap it up, guys. I know it's a long video. For those of you that have stuck it out here to the end, um, I think you know what to do. And I think you know what I'm going to say in terms of what's going on with this bait. And here it is. Don't buy it. Dead serious, guys. Don't, don't buy it. Do, do not stay away. <laughs> the reason is because if you get it and the other guy gets it and the other guy and whoever watches this, the more people out there that have it, that's a chance that maybe I fish the same lake as you and I don't catch the fish because you already caught it on this damn bait, man. <laughs> um, seriously, guys, you know what's funny? In the beginning of the video, way, way back in the very, very couple seconds, I was uh, putting a clip of the first time I put this video, uh, this uh, bait on, on video, which was about six years ago. It was my top five baits of 2013. Number three of my top five of 2013. And I am, <laughs> I'm already regretting this. But I, I, I got to tell you, just, just do it. And I was very truthful in that statement. I was reluctant to actually talk about it because it was known, but it wasn't as known as it is today. And I really was conflicted. Like I thought, yeah, I want to share this with people. Yes, it's a tr I think it's a really, really awesome bait. I think it's a special bait. I really do. Part of me didn't want to blow it up. Part of me wanted to kind of keep it on the low. I said, okay, listen, people that will figure it out, will figure it out. Well, I don't want to have any more people out there throwing it that have to but i don't know i just i don't know it's one of those things guys you know when you find a magic bait or you have like a secret spot you don't want to give it up and magic's a strong word and, and i don't want to allude to any of that guys but here's here's my criteria what separates a good lure from a great lure are lures that within category amongst small wakes right we can't compare this against our big you know nine and ten inch wakes but amongst small wakes, 
this one has done it for me on so many other days where I've integrated other lures. I've go back and forth. I try other things. I think they're on a topwater bite. Let me try this wake. Let me try that wake. And this is the one though that it manages to get the bites when the others aren't getting bit. Uh, this is the one that shortly after starting to fish it, very shortly, got me my first swim bait fish over five pounds. That one there. Um, this is the one, no, this is the one that um, got me my personal best of just under eight pounds for a northeast fish. Uh, and this is not, guys, I don't fish it actually all the time. It is, there's select instances where I fish it, and in those instances, it keeps coming through. Not only doing numbers on days where nothing else is doing any numbers, and also getting the size. Repeatedly getting big fish disproportionate to the size of this kind of small, chunky bait. So that's my criteria of any lure. What makes a great lure is a lure that really separates itself from the pack and just does it better than its peers. It is. I mean, it just is, guys. This is the one that if I, you know, had to whittle down everything I own and only keep a few baits, and if I just had to keep like one or two top water wake baits, it would be this. It, it just has proven itself out. We're talking about a six-year sample size here. <laughs> Lots of data to sift through, and that's what this video is all about, man. You know, it's just, you know, show and prove. The thing has done it over the years. Uh, let me just share you guys a couple last things here, and then we'll sign off. Quick reorganization, just to keep you guys visually amused, because we are just wrapping up here at the tabletop. Uh, guys, in addition to doing the numbers, in addition to doing the size, one of the things I always recommend when people um, say, you know, I'm just getting into swim bait fishing, what should I start with? You know, you want a lure in kind of every class, something that goes subsurface, you, um, you know, your soft baits, your hard baits. One of the things I love about this, though, is it's one of my absolute top segue baits. So before you maybe even have a swim bait rod and reel, you don't even have to get anything big. My entire first year I was throwing this, I threw it on a six foot 10 uh, Falcon medium heavy, it was like a light jigging rod. That's what I used. I had it on, uh, actually I had it on straight braid. I didn't even have a leader at the time. I don't even know if I lost any fish. Totally not the right rod. I, I don't like the straight braid to it anymore. But the point is guys, it's like, that's what I used for an entire year. And, and I did just fine. So, you know, definitely get the appropriate tool when you can, but in terms of a segue bait, kind of dipping your toe into marginally bigger baits and stepping into that swim bait world, one of the easiest ways to do it is to do it kind of for free. Now you have to buy the lure, but you don't have to get any new gear to go along with it. So that's one of the great things about it. Another thing is guys, while they're not super expensive, they're not cheap considering it is just a little four inch bait. Uh, I think they usually sell for about $29. Sometimes on third party sites, I'll see them actually jack it up. There was a time where these were in short supply and people were asking $39, even $50. Um, but the point is that you got a little bit of money wrapped up into it. You can't lose it, right? Different than if you're getting one of those first swim baits and you get something that sinks and it's always like, oh, you know, you're not used to spending $20, $30, $40 on a single lure. You can't lose this one, guys. You're starting with a floater, but it's not a dedicated floater. So you can fish down into the water column because it is also that crankbait but god forbid it snaps off on a cast or something like that she's going to float up and you can go and uh you know fish her out of there and get her back so you're not going to lose your money uh, on the investment speaking of investment everybody there's something called roi return of investment and if you've watched this whole video and if you're still with me here now after however long it's been 50 plus minutes i hope that this investment of your time has uh been beneficial to you and you've learned everything you need to know about this this great little bait when I first got it I knew I wanted to make a video uh, all those years ago and I've waited this long intentionally trying to amass clips and just information and data so I could talk to you intelligently and be sure that I was recommending something that was as good as I thought it was and it really is so guys we come full circle with my original phantom colored one that I got a number of years ago and I leave you with the moment that inspired me as I started to just get into swim baits, my first swim bait fish over five pounds, which led me down the rabbit hole of the pursuit of even bigger fish on big baits. But all the while, this little guy here, responsible for some of the biggest and ultimately my biggest fish. Thanks for watching.
up this black milk bait shell cracker. Looking to get into these bigger swim baits here, these stories of using these things slow in the colder months. Look at that fish. Look at that fish. It's about 40 something degrees out right now. I mean, this is not a tiny lure, and this is a big, big fish. Boys and girls. Look at that fish. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me?